Hey everyone, today I just want to share with you some of the things that I do to help in securing a brand new Synology NAS. Now we're going to be working with the DS423 Plus in this video, but what I'm going to show you can apply to most Synology models. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm signed into the DS423 Plus and we are running DSM 7.2 for this demonstration. One of the first things you want to do is to disable the admin and guest user accounts. So we'll do that by going over to the control panel. We'll come to user and group. And you can see here the system default user, the admin user, and the guest user are disabled. Simply just click on the users, hit the edit button, and make sure you have a check mark in here where it says deactivate this account. So the next area you want to take a look at are your password settings. So we're going to stay in the user and group area. We're going to come under advanced and here are the default settings right out of the box. So what you can do here is include special characters, exclude common password. You could also change the minimum password length if you want to make it longer. For example, 16 characters, whatever you decide to do here, whether you want to include special characters or exclude the common passwords, whatever changes you make to the default settings, just be sure you come down here and hit the apply button. So the next thing you might want to consider is the logout timer. So let's come over to the control panel and let's go to the security and you can see here the login settings and here's your logout timer. So it's set to 15 minutes. Basically what this is saying is, if the unit is idle for 15 minutes, it will log the user out of the NAS. Now this is particularly good as a security feature. Let's just say you have an employee who steps away from their desk and they're going to the bathroom and then maybe to grab a cup of coffee from the refreshment area. Well, they're leaving their device unattended. So after the set time here, the device will log out. Now you have to decide what your threshold is. You know, you could drop this to 10 minutes or five minutes, but keep in mind you have an employee that takes a phone call that stops what they're doing. And then all of a sudden the system logs them out. Let's say after five or 10 minutes, it could be a little bit of an inconvenience, but again, this all depends on what your uh, risk threshold is. So whatever you change this number to here, again, just make sure you hit the apply button. So the next area I want to take a look at is disabling the SSH service. So let's come over to terminal and SNMP and you can see here by default, Telnet and SSH are disabled right out of the box. However, should you need to access your device's command line, you can enable SSH. You could leave it on port 22 for the time being, hit the apply button. You can see here it says changes applied make the changes that you need to make in the command line and then go back and be sure to disable SSH. It's always a best practice to leave it disabled. Just make sure you hit the apply button so that the changes are saved. The next thing I want to show you is how to change your default DSM ports. So let's come over to the control panel and let's come down to the login portal. And you could see here by default, Synology uses port 5000 for HTTP traffic and port 5001 for HTTPS traffic. So I would recommend that you change these ports to something other than 5000 and 5001 since everybody knows that these are the default Synology ports. And then while you're at it, you can go ahead and apply a check mark here, which basically enables the redirection of all HTTP traffic to HTTPS for the DSM desktop, which basically means that the traffic between your computer and the Synology NAS desktop is no longer passing in clear text. Whatever you do, whatever changes you make here, again, just remember to hit the save button to apply the changes. Finally, last but not least, I want to show you where to go to set up two-factor authentication. If you're not using two-factor authentication on your Synology NAS, you definitely should be. In fact, you should be using two-factor authentication wherever possible. Let's go up to the user icon here in the upper right-hand corner. Let's click on that and then select the personal icon. Let's come down to security 
And then you see here two-factor authentication, add an extra layer of security by implementing a second authentication step. So there are multiple second authentication steps you can choose here. You have approved sign-in, which is a one-tap via Synology secure sign-in mobile app, a verification code, which is a one-time password using the Synology secure sign-in mobile app to get the verification code. And then you have a hardware security key, sign-ins using a USB key, pass key, Windows Hello, or Mac OS's Touch ID. Now, I believe I have videos on my channel for using the hardware security key, sign-in to the Synology NAS. If you'd like to see one of the other two options, let me know down in the comments below. And if you stayed with me up until this point in the video, here's the bonus tip that I promised you. We're going to talk about enabling auto block. So what exactly is auto block? Let's go over to the control panel. Let's go to security and let's go to the protection tab. And you can see here, enable this option to block IP addresses with too many failed login attempts. An IP address will be blocked if it reaches the number of failed login attempts within the time period entered below. So by default, enable auto block is on. The login attempts is 10 within a five minute period. If that works for you, you don't have to do anything else. I like to change it. I like to use eight login attempts within a two minute period. Again, that's just my own personal preference. And then make sure you hit apply if you do make any changes. Now, if an IP address gets blocked, it will remain blocked indefinitely unless you enable this block expiration. When you enable block expiration, you can specify after how many days the IP address will become unblocked. Or if you decide not to use enable block expiration, you can always go into the allow block list, go to block list here, your list of blocked IPs will appear. You can just select whatever address that is blocked that you want to unblock. You can select it here and then remove it from the list. So there you go, just a few simple measures to help in securing a brand new Synology NAS. If you found any value in today's video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I list here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I wanna thank you as I do in every video for using the Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions as always. Please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.